We are going to look at functions and limits today. How to deal with problems involving functions. We are also going to look at limits. How to find the limit of a function as it tends towards a given value. Functions. A function or mapping associates one element or member of a set S, which we call the domain, with one and only one member or element of another set Y, which is called the codomain. Now, the members of the codomain which are connected to the members of the domain are called the images of the elements in the domain. Now, the range is a subset of the code domain. It contains all the images of all the elements of the domain. Let us illustrate what I have just said with this diagram. Here is a set S and here is another set Y. The set S contains this member or this element A, B and C. And this set S having the members A, B and C are, is referred to as the domain. Then we have Y as the codomain. There's an S here, which means we take an element in S, perform some operation, which is the function here, and we give a result in the codomain. So if you take your A, you carry out an operation, it gives you a value F. If you take your B, you perform the operation, it gives you a value E. You take your C, you perform the operation, it gives you a value G. These values E, F, and G are called the range. But E, F, G, and A, they are all called the images of these uh, relationship. As I said earlier, from the illustration, our range is a set of E, F, and G. Why the images is a set of E, F, G, and H. We therefore write that F is a function that maps elements in S to the elements in Y. That means, for example, we can write this now F such that S is a function of 2S minus 1. That is, f of s is equal to 2s minus 1. In this regard, if we take elements from the domain, let's say your s is equal to 1, you perform the operation on this function and it gives you 1. So the element in the domain produces another element in the code domain. If you take 2, you operate it and then you get 3. And you take s plus 1, you operate it, you will now have 2 s plus 1. So this gives you the, uh, the, the images, and this one are the values in the domain. Now, there are types of functions. We will start with number 1, the onto function. The onto function is a function in which all the elements, all the elements, of y. Remember y is your code domain. All the elements of y are images of one or more elements in the set S. As I said earlier, we define that an onto function is a function in which all the elements of y are images of one or more elements in the set S. These are all the elements of Y. And they are all images of one or all the elements of the code of the domain S. You can see this, you see this, and you see that. So this is the range equal to the image. But look at this one. One is 
having one here from the domain to the code domain. Another value is also having a connection to the same one. So the definition is that at least one element here will be affiliated to an element in Y. So two elements here can be affiliated, as you can see this one. This can be translated to look at a problem like this. Here is an S, a function, so that S is a function of S squared. Now, what does this mean? This means that F of S is equal to S squared. If our element 1 in the domain is imputed in the uh, function, we have 1 squared, which is 1. If it is minus 1, minus 1 squared will give you 1. If it's minus 2, minus 2 squared will give you 4. And if it is uh, 2, 2 squared will give you 4. So you now see that these are the range. And the range here, if you simplify it, is actually 1 and then uh, and 4. This is the range of these uh, functions. We take a look at an, on, uh, an onto mapping. In an onto mapping, the code domain is equal to the range as you have already said so we take the second thing one to one function one to one function this is a function in which each member in S which is the domain has only one image in the range only one image in the range. Here is your S, here is your Y. These are elements in the domain. They all have one image in the code domain. A has this image, B has the same image, and C has the same image. Number three. A constant function is of the form F of S equal to K or F is a function so that S is mapped onto K. Number four, identity function. It's of the form F of S equal to S. Or F is a function so that S is mapped onto S. Number five, a linear function. It's of the form F of S equal to AS plus B. The quadratic function is of the form f of s equal to a s squared plus b s plus c. So these are various types of functions that we are going to be dealing with shortly. Let us now look at the composition of a function f with a function g. It's like looking at a combination of one function and another function. Now this is denoted f composite g. This is a symbol not a zero not an O but it is a symbol representing composition so it is read F composite G and is a function in S so that the G of S is in domain of F that is to say for F composite G into S it will be equal to take the F, open the bracket, and then G of S. So that G of S is in the domain, is residing in F. And that's what we have written here now. Let's take an example of what we have said. It will make it clearer. If a function S is equal to 2S, and another function GS is equal to S plus 1. Then, F composite G of S will be equal to, take the F and then G of S in S. Now, this G of S, for what we are giving, is S plus 1. So, you take the F, instead of writing G of S, we now write S plus 1. And then, F of S was given to you as equal to 2S. So, this value now will take the place of S in that term. Uh, function. So that would be equal to 2 multiplying the S and the S now has 
change over or are taking the new value of x plus 1. Opening this bracket, you have 2x plus 2, and this is the result of the composition of f with the uh, uh, g. Okay, one thing is clear here. Note, f composite g is not equal to g composite f. That is to say, fg is not equal to gf. Let's immediately try to illustrate this. gs was equal to s uh, was equal to s plus one, and we have our f of s was equal to two uh, s, and we saw that f composite g of s was equal to the value we got the other time will be f into g of s and then that becomes f into uh, s plus 1 and then this result in f into 2 multiplying s plus 1 and that was equal to 2s plus 2 so if we take g composite f and of course of the same s it means that g will now be uh, uh, occupying the position of the former of f before, that is to say, our f of s will now be inside g. It's a domain of g now. Now, what does this mean? Our g of f of s is equal to 2s. Now, our g, now that this is 2s, what is the formula for gs? gs is s plus 1. So we will replace our s by 2s. So this becomes a, a 2s and then plus 1. You now notice that the first result 2s plus 2 and the second one 2s plus 1, they are not what equal. So we have now shown that our f composite g is not equal to g composite f. Take note of that. It means that they are not commutative. Not commutative. Not commutative. Commutative. That's what I have just said. Inverse function. If y is equal to f of s, is if y equal to f of s is a function. F inverse of s is the inverse of f of s. That is f raised by minus one into s is the inverse of the function s and is calculated by solving the equation y equal to f of s for s in terms of y that is to say at the end you are having s in terms of y and then replace y with s in the final stage let's take an example Quickly, let's look at an example. It is going to be uh, clearer when we solve a problem. If f is a function that maps s into 3 all over 3 minus 2f, and s is not equal to 3 over 2, you know the reason? Because if s is equal to 3 over 2, then that function is undefined. The denominator will be equal to zero, so you must have to give that condition and exclude it. Then the inverse of f, that is f this power one into s. This is now the inverse of the function f of f is dash solution. Let your y be equal to three all over three minus two s. That is the given function. Then if you cross and multiply, we now have y into 3 minus 2f equal to 3. You open the bracket. You have 3y minus 2xy equal to 3. Then of course, you are making s the subject of the equation. So we now have minus 2xy equal to 3 minus 3y. You have moved your 3y to the right hand side. Then our s, which is what you want to make the subject of the equation, becomes 3 minus 3y all over minus 2y. Therefore, the inverse of the function s, the f of s, will be equal to 3 minus 3s all over minus 2x. We continue by simplifying the inverse that becomes 
minus into 3 minus 3s all over 2s because it's advisable not to leave a minus or a negative sign at the denominator and then of course that means the inverse is equal to 3s minus and minus 3s will give you plus 3s better to write the positive before the negative so we have 3s minus 3 all over 2s and that gives you the inverse of that giving a, a, a function limit of a function if f of s is a real function defined at all values of s near a value a but not actually at a is near it but not actually a very close to it then f of s approaches l as s approaches a it means that the function itself will be approaching a value as the s is approaching the a it can be from the right or from the left negative or positive but it's approaching that particular value a but not exactly a therefore the function itself the real function will be approaching another value called l that is to say f of s approaches l as s approaches a or we can write that our l is equal to the limit of f of s as s approaches a now that said to solve problems on limits, first reduce the given function to its lowest terms and then substitute the value that S approaches. But let's remind ourselves that cases such as 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity are treated with other methods, not necessarily for this level. For example, evaluate the limit as s tends to 2 of this function here. Our solution. Please observe carefully what I'm going to do. We said we should reduce the fraction to its lowest end. So let us reduce it. Observe that we have s minus 2 into, we can factorize the s squared plus 3 s minus 2 to give you s. Uh, minus 1 let's see what we get it cannot be factorized so we leave it at that so that's s squared plus 3s minus 2 then we go the denominator is s minus 2 and then s plus 2 remember difference of 2 squared what happened this and this we go so we are now left with s squared plus 3s minus 2 all over s plus 2. So when I take the limit as s tends to 2 will be equal to the limit as s tends to 2 of this function. The limit will be equal to this. So when we take that, we don't need to write this. So we take the limit as s tends to 2. So this becomes, you now substitute the value of s equal to 2, very close to 2, maybe 1.99999, very close. So we are approximating it that, assuming it is actually 2. So this becomes 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 2 all over 2 plus 2. What then happen? 4 plus 6 minus 2 all over 4. And this is 10 minus 2 is 8 all over 4. And that will give you 2. So the limit of that function as s tends to 2 is equal to 2. Examples on functions and limit of a function. Question number 1. Find the range of the function f so that s is mapped onto s squared minus 1. If the domain of F is the set of minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Our solution, quickly, we have been given the domain. Our function F of S is equal to 
L squared minus 1. So we take the first element in the domain, which is S equal to minus 2. We substitute it in the function, which gives you minus 2, L squared minus 1, and that will give you 4, and minus 1, and that will give you 3. You take the second element, minus 1, you substitute it, and then you have 1 minus 1, and this will give you 0. You take the third element, f of 0, that becomes 0 minus 1, and the value is equal to minus 1. You also take the next one, which is 1, so we have 1 squared minus 1 is also equal to 0. Now we take the last one, f of 2, we operate it on the function that is 2, all squared minus 1, the result is going to be 4 minus 1, and that is equal to 3. So at the end, remember you are told to write the range, the range becomes the set, 30 with minus 1, followed by 0, and then followed by 3. These are the three elements that we calculated, which is the range of these uh, functions. Example 2, question 2. If G is a function such that S is mapped onto S plus 3 all over 3S minus 2, where S is not equal to 2 over 3, and explain that before, find the value of S for which the inverse of S is not defined. Solution. First and foremost, you say y to be equal to s plus 3 all over 3s minus 2. You cross multiply y into 3s minus 2 will be equal to s plus 3. Open the bracket, 3xy minus 2y will be equal to s plus 3. Remember, you are making S the subject of the formula, so we have 3xy and then uh, minus S is equal to 2y plus 3. I have moved minus 2y to the other side, it will become plus 2y. Now we factorize, our S is common, we now have 3y minus 1 is equal to 2y plus 3. Therefore, S will be equal to 2y plus 3 all over. 3y minus 1. And so the inverse of this function becomes 2s, you replace your y with s plus 3 all over 3s minus 1. But the question is asking you, or rather instead of s, please, this should be g because we are told this function is g. So now you are asked to find the value of s for which this inverse is not defined. So g minus 1, g raised to the power minus 1 of s is not defined when 3s minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, for s equal to 1 over 3, the uh, inverse of this function is not defined. So our answer is s equal to 1. Example 3 If the function G is such that S is mapped onto 2S minus 3 all over 4, we have to find the value of the inverse when S is minus 3. Find the value of the inverse when S is minus 3. First and foremost, we have to find the inverse of this function. We now say y is equal to our 2s minus 3 all over 4. Cross multiply 4y will be equal to 2s minus 3. Now you have to make s the solution formula, so we have 4y plus 3 is equal to 2s. Divide both sides by 2, we have that our s will be equal to 4y plus 3 divided by 2. Now, to get the inverse, we now write the g, we are using g, not s, so we have g, the inverse of s, will now be equal to your 4s replacing y by s plus 3, 
all over 2. Now, you have to find the value of when s is minus 3, what will be the value? The inverse of minus 3 will now become 4 into minus 3 plus 3 into 2. You have replaced s by a minus 3. Simplifying this, we give you minus 12 plus 3 all over 2. A minus 12 plus 3 will give you minus 9 all over 2. Either you leave the answer like this or you write it as minus 4 and a half. Question 4. Two functions, f of s and g of s, are defined on the set of three numbers by f of s equal to 3s squared minus 2 and g of s equal to s plus 3. Find f composite g of s. Solution. We have here our f of s is given to you as 3s squared minus 2. Your g of s is given to you as s plus 3. Now, your f of g of s is equal to f into s plus 3. You are replacing uh, uh, g of s by s plus 3. So what does this give you? This becomes, you now replace s in f of s by what you have in this way. So we now have uh, this to be equal to 3 multiplying s plus 3 or squared minus 2. We are replacing s by s plus 3. So we will now expand this become 3 into s squared and then we have uh, plus 6s and we have plus 9 close it and then subtract the 2. Now what happens next? Open the brackets 3s squared plus 18s and then plus 27 minus 2. And what would this become? 3s squared and then of course plus your 18s and then you have plus uh, 25. 3 is not common so we cannot count so further than that and we are told to find g, f, f composite g. So our answer f composite g of f is equal to that. Example 5. If f of x minus 4 equal to x squared plus 2x plus 3, find f of 2. There is a reason why I am bringing this question as an example. You cannot substitute 2 into the given expression like that. So our solution, the first thing you do is your s minus 4 is equal to 2. In this case, s is equal to 2 plus 4 and this is equal to 6. So you have been told that f of s minus 4 is equal to this one. And to find f of 2, our f of 2 will actually be equal to the f of 6. So you now substitute this as 6 squared plus 2 times 6 and then plus 3. Giving you 36 plus 12 and plus 3. And this is equal to 51. Question number 6. If f of s is equal to this function, find f of s plus 1. It's like a reversal of what we did in example 5. Here, wherever you have s, you will replace it by s plus 1. That's exactly what this one is saying. So your solution will be equal to your f of s is given to you as 2s squared minus 5s and then plus 3. Then my f of s plus 1 will now be equal to 2, replace s by s plus 1, this is squared, and 5, replace s by, by s plus 1, and then you have plus 3. Beautiful. Now expand. This is 2. Square this s squared plus 2s plus 1. Then, of course, this will give you 5 into s plus 1, and this is plus 3. Open the brackets. This will give you 2s squared plus 4s, and then plus 2, minus 
5 times minus 5 plus 3. Collect like terms. 2s squared does not have any like terms, so we leave it at that. We have 2s squared. 4s minus 5s will give you minus s. And then 2 minus 5 is minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 it is 0. So the value f of s plus 1 is equal to Let's take example number 7. Find the value of y as s approaches 5 in the equation y equal to this. We are now looking at the, the limit of a function. So the solution, as we said, you have to simplify the given equation. Here, your s squared plus 5s minus 50 all over s minus 5 will be equal to your s will factorize the numerator and what would that be? Uh, 5 and 10, so maybe minus 5, and then s minus 10. Let's see what happens. This becomes positive. Okay, everything here, all over s minus 5. You see? So this and this will cancel. You are left with s plus 10. So what do you do? You now say limit as s tends to 5 of s plus 10 will be equal to. Uh, 5 plus 10 and the value is equal to 15 and that is the solution to the problem so as s tends to 5 that function tends to the value 15 exercise question number one if a function is defined by f of s plus 1 equal to 3s squared minus s plus 4 find f of 0 you have the options a b c and d Question 2. If g of s is equal to s squared plus 3s plus 4, find g of s plus 1 minus g of s. You have the options a, b, c, and d. Number 3. Find the inverse of the function f of s equal to 3s plus 4. Options a, 1 quarter of s plus 3, b, 1 fifth of s minus 5, C, one third of S minus 4. D, one third of S plus 4. Question number 4. Find the limits as S tends to 2 of S squared minus 4 all over S minus 2. Options A, minus 4, B, 0, C, 4, D, A. Question 5. The limit of S squared minus A squared all over S minus A is Okay, sorry, as S tends to A is that A to A, B, A, C, 0, D, minus 2. Number 6, calculate the limit as S tends to 0 of cos S all over S minus 2. A minus half, B, 0, C, half, D, 1. Number 7, evaluate limit as S tends to 3 of s squared minus 4 s plus 3 all over s squared minus 9. Option A, 3 1 third, B, 2 1 third, C, 0, B, 1 third. Question number A, find the limit of the function s squared minus 9 s plus 20 all over s squared minus 3 s minus 4 as s tends to 4. A minus 5, B minus 1 over 5, C, 1 over 5, and D is 5. So here are the answers to the questions or the exercise given to you. Number 1, the option D is correct. Number 2, B. Number 3, C. 4 is also C. 5 is A. 6 is A. 7 is D. And 8 is B. Here is the nugget for today. You are not truly free until you have been made captive by your supreme mission in life by John Mercy.